Welcome you all to this Abacus Python YouTube channel. This is the Abacus Python scripting learn with the concept lecture series. This is the seventh lecture in the series and in this see in this lecture we will discuss how to ask the inputs from the user using some GUI using some interface some pop-up window or something. So firstly what usually we do is we usually write all our inputs in a text file and we provide that text file to the script so when that script runs what happens is it reads the input from that particular text file so there you can see there is some back referencing so where the current script has to read some already saved text file so that's why i have highlighted with the red arrow where there is a back referencing so in this method what we we are going to do is we will run the script and as and when we require any inputs from the user, we will ask for the particular inputs. So, so this method is very convenient actually because many of times what happens is a script has to ask for particular inputs in order to run it properly. For example, in any case if error happens and let's say some inputs has to be taken from the user, let's say choosing some particular method or something. So in between we can ask any inputs. but the same thing we cannot take as an input from the text file if you can also that will be very cumbersome okay so first of all this method is going to be very convenient because as and when we require the inputs we will ask the user for the inputs and as i said the specific inputs can be asked anytime while running the script again we can validate these inputs and we can also ask for the inputs again let's say user user put some wrong inputs we can validate the inputs and directly we can show that user that okay particular input is not correct and we have to change that input but same thing if you have to do with the text file then it is like a repetition of the task now to understand the methods i have opened this affect uh, scripting users guide so this is the 2016 version and why i have you opened this uh, directly abacus user guide is uh, so previously what we were doing we were uh, opening the abacus ce doing the operations manually and then those operation gets recorded in the replay file and we are just manipulating those but about the this prompting the users this method we cannot record this using the abacus gui so that's why we have to refer the scripting guide uh, and the reference guide as well so there are few commands um, which we cannot record using the abacus ci so the prompting the user input is the one and uh, i think uh, one one or two lectures before we had seen highlight command so which highlights the specific entity in the abacus for example node node set element and so on okay so these set us few commands which we have to explore in the abacus guide and uh, uh, reference guide okay so there are basically three types of inputs that we can ask using the scripting interface one is the we can ask this single input so that correspond to get input method and we can add multiple inputs that correspond to the get inputs method and we can show the warning messages to the user so that is correspond to the get warning reply method okay so there is one note written here and this is very important note so it says that because these three these methods creates a pop-up window uh, to ask the user for the inputs these are the gui command if you want to run this script without any GUI, so there are multiple methods where we can run our script, right? So using no GUI option in, in the command line, replay and using this command, you can run our script without using the GUI, Abacus GUI, okay? So in these scenarios, you cannot use this kind of methods, okay? So this is the get input method and this method, you can take single input from the user. The path is the get input and there is one required argument called prompt which is a string so this is the title of that uh, input that we can ask and there is one optional argument called default so what is the default argument we can show in that and there is one return value so return see whatever the value user gives and if user press cancel then it will return the none so none here is not a string none is the none object in this packet okay so so first let's import the abacus module from abacus import star then we will create a variable called num then write get input then we will write prompt then we will give the in, uh, heading or title for that input so let's say enter your age 
then the default value we will set to let's say 30 and we will print this now no. and let's uh, run this to the, the abacus so let's try and run this so you can see the get input is the standard uh, title of the title uh, title of this input box and there is this enter your age that is the title of the input you want to take from user and 30 is the default value that we have set and here you can see the two buttons ok and cancel so if the inputs are correct then you can press ok and otherwise you can cancel ok so let's say if now user presses ok so here you can see in the prompt that we have printed the 30 value so printed 30 now let's run it again and in this case let's press cancel so as you can see it is return the none so this is the none object ok so let's run the script again and uh, let's try to type something uh, other than number so let's type python so here you can see i can still type python here that means i can type the characters so though the edge cannot be a character value right still i can able to type this uh, characters so there are two ways actually so one we can highlight user that enters some specific value and other one is like uh, giving some warning reply so at the end we will see warning reply so for now let's see this uh, giving some extra text so you the text you can give using this uh, slash t so let's see that uh, please insert uh, integer values only okay so this is some extra information that we will give so let's try to run this okay. so whenever you hover on to that uh, title right so you can see that text you will see so please enter integer values only so this is one way to avoid uh, or direct user to view the correct values okay let's move on so this is the second uh, method we will going to see here is the get inputs okay so get inputs this method we will use for taking the multiple inputs so get input we are using for taking only one so get inputs we can use for taking multiple inputs from the user okay so the arguments are different so here there is an argument called fields so this is the argument where we have to pass sequence of sequence so that means in tuple we have to pass a tuple and each inside tuple will have the information the title of the input and then the default value of the input okay and we have here two optional arguments label it's like a title of the bunch of inputs so let's say if you are asking three four inputs so what are those inputs you can briefly write about it maybe or give some specific information there so the title of the box is different so that is the dialog title so the default value is the get inputs okay and the return value here is the it will return the sequence of strings so whatever the input user gives so that we will return in the form of sequence and if user clicks on cancel button it will return a sequence of none objects okay now let's try to write the code so i'll use the same code uh, modify that one a bit so instead of get input now i have to write to get inputs and uh, i'll create a separate uh, fields uh, just to not my code get composite so you can see i'm typing here the tuple of people so inside one big tuple i have one two tuples so this each tuple represents the represents the each input that i'm going to ask from the user okay so i'm writing first uh, input as enter your name and here i'm giving as an empty string that means i'm not giving any default value for it okay and then in the next input i'll ask as uh, enter your age so i'll use the same slash t so just to show extra uh, information about it and i'm giving as a 30 as a default value and again uh, just to uh, just to repeat 30 though it is an integer value i am still passing it as a string so it is always works in the string format only okay. so let me write uh, the first uh, argument as fields and assign it to the fields and the second is the label so label is a uh, so let's say enter the details below so just uh, some extra information and then i want to change the title of that uh, input box so let's uh, like the basic details okay and uh, i'll change the variable name instead of num i'll write data 
Okay, now let's try to run this. So I'm getting the syntax error fields. Oh. So the string formatting have not done correctly. Try to okay. So in please oh, sorry, do not a common common. Okay, sorry for that. Let's try it again. Okay. Now here you can see uh, basic detail that is the title uh, we have shown using the dialog title argument and then here you can see enter the details below so some in extra information about the whatever the below inputs are there and I have given two inputs enter your name and enter your age so for the age there is a default value mentioned that is the 30 and whenever I hover on that enter your age it will show us some extra information and again there are two buttons ok and cancel so let's try to insert some value in first entry box say with them maybe and uh, instead of h i'll let's say try to uh, type 2.4 though it's asking me for uh, integers i'm still able to type uh, anything as i said previously so here you can see it it has uh, printed two values in the list format so let's say um, let's try to run this script again and in this time i'll i'll press cancel so so none so here you can see it is return the none okay so let's try to run the script again and uh, so here you can see i'm able to type 2.4 so i can type anything so this is the one thing we have to take care of so here you can see though i given the information in the in the input title into the integers values only so still let's say if user types this wrong information so this is our duty to check the inputs if those inputs are correct or not okay so this we will see in this uh, get user warning replay so we will use that uh, method and uh, try to address that issue so let's uh, move on to that so now we will see get warning reply method and uh, this this method we will use to show any warning reply to the user okay the path for this method is uh, warning get warning reply and uh, there are two required arguments one is the message and another one is the buttons so the message will be the string so what what the me what message you want to show to the user and the buttons can be a tuple sequence of standard button so it, it should be a tuple uh, there are four values only we can ask we can give yes no yes to cancel Okay. there is no optional argument and the return value will be what button user has pressed so that button it will be returned okay so button let's say get warning reply then the first uh, argument is the message so the message let's type type let's say please insert valid value for each and uh, and write uh, let's say so do you want to use default value okay let's change the uh, age value is not valid and do you want to use the default value now this okay and uh, let's try buttons the next argument so as i said we have to pass the tuple so let's try to use two buttons yes and no okay and let's print this uh, button no now let's try to run the script so here you can see i can see the edge value is not valid and you want to use the default value so there i can see two buttons yes or no. let's try to use, press yes okay now you can see the yes has been written and let's try to no no has been written okay so this is the warning reply we can give to the user now let's try to validate the inputs given by the user okay. so we copy paste this one and uh, what i'll do is i'll try to validate the age value now so i'll use uh, something called as try and accept block just to validate that so i'll try to convert this into integer and if it is not then if, if i mean if user has given some other inputs then it will give me some error so i'll try to catch that using the exception so whenever that happens i'll try to give a warning message to the user like uh, same as we have shown as we have seen uh, just now age value is not valid and uh, do you want to use the default value okay so let's say if user presses yes okay that means if user want to use us the default value so in that case we will assign num equals to 30 in the string format and uh, if user presses no then we will ask the user input um, age again okay so so this is the format actually to validate the inputs from the user 
okay so first we have asked the user for the inputs and uh, then we are using try and accept block to validate that one and if it is not in the correct format then we will show a warning to the user so this you can customize as per your requirement okay so let's try to run that one so let's say um, i'll try some type something else so let's say python maybe okay and press ok so here you can see this uh, warning reply it value is not valid and we want to use the default value okay if user presses yes okay the value for num is 30 so that is run correctly so just let me just uh, print that num okay so print num okay let me run this once again Again, I'll type Python. Okay, and getting the warning reply. Okay, still not printing. Ah, okay. I have to take the print statement out of the files. Yes, so just let me try once again. Now let's type uh, Python. Okay, again warning reply. Then you can see the default value is been set. Okay. Now let's see that. Let's try once again. Python. Okay, the error warning in this case we will press no and enter your age. You can see again it is asking for the value. Okay, so uh, this is the way we have to work actually while while uh, validating the user inputs. Okay, so hope we, you have find this one interesting and uh, stay tuned. Let's recap what we have learned so far. So first of all, as we seen, we cannot record this method using this abacus CAE. so previously what we were doing is we are doing the tasks all the tasks manually inside the abacus CAE. then we then abacus generates one replay file then use then we will take out the methods from that replay file and create some main script so this method we cannot adopt it here because the gui command that we are going to use it here this cannot be recorded in the uh, abacus CAE. There is one more thing. So we cannot give a option in that get input method to validate any inputs. So user can type anything what he wants. Let's say a script want an integer, but user can in able to type anything. So explicitly we have to take care of this validation. Okay. And the last thing. So let's say you are asking user for the inputs and this codes incorporated in any script. So this script you cannot run without GUI mode. So stay safe. Be hungry to learn. See you. Bye. Enter.